So as we begin to paint on this painting, there's several steps. And I know that everybody paints at different paces. I'm gonna come back over to me for a second. So everybody paints at different paces. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna put the steps in the chat as we move along. So I don't want you to start feeling rushed if you're not ready to move on when I, when I um, introduce the next step. It'll be there in the chat. And if you need me to go over what the colors are we're mixing or how we're mixing, I'm more than happy. Just unmute yourself and ask me a question at any time, okay? Good. All right, so we're gonna start with our sky. Is everybody kind of ready to get moving on here? So we're gonna paint the sky um, a dark blue color. And I know it doesn't look really dark on the scene, I mean, on your pictures, but this color here is actually a lot darker than just the plain blue. This is 50% blue and 50% purple mixed together. So we're gonna go ahead, take our blues and our purples, and I'm gonna use my, my paint palette for this one. I always wet my brush first before I dip it in the paint. So I'll wet the brush, wipe it on the paper towel, and then I'm gonna go into my paint and I'm gonna scoop out a good amount of blue. So say I take three scoops of the blue now I'm gonna go into my purple with my brush, I'm not even gonna clean it off because we're mixing these colors and mix the same amount or just about the same amount of purple and blue and give them a good mix. And then I'm gonna start on my painting, but I'm not gonna start up close to a building or a mountain. I'm gonna start up in the corner because right now my paint brush is loaded and I wanna unload as much of that paint off up in the corner as I can. And this paint, the, the um, tempera paint, it has this really cool transparent quality. So when you get to the where the cross is, you just paint right over it. You don't have to worry about coming up close to the edges of it and losing it. You're gonna paint over it and you're still gonna see that cross coming through that paint. Um, now what I do is I kind of move the brush in all different directions because what that does is it pushes the paint down into the texture of the canvas board. So you don't end up with a bunch of little white dots. But one thing that is not, um, a, not an easy quality with this paint is trying to get it look like it's a flat color it, um, without any brush strokes. You're gonna have brush strokes. So the coolest way that I've found to work with that is just keep moving my brush into different directions and it creates like this really neat kind of a texture for the background. Now what's going to happen when we put stars on top of this, it's going to take away from the fact that it's not one solid color. So go ahead and paint away. If you want it a little darker, you can even come back in and add purple after you've already painted it, if it's not dark enough for you. And I'm gonna do that just to show you, do the demonstration. But I like the way the blue that blue and purple mixed together um, really makes the brown um, pop on the building, the brown color.
like I said, if you get if you get a little, um, I mean, I go over the edges a little bit on my stuff, and I'm totally okay with that. If you accidentally cross over into a big area, you just um, wet your Q-tip and and pull it right back off. It wipes right off. It's actually easier to get it off of an area where you've painted after it dries than it is while it's still wet. Because when it's wet, it just kind of spreads a little bit like watercolor. But once it's dry, it's really easy to get up. So like I said, I want mine to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go right into my purple. I have all my blue on there, the combination. I'm just going right in and just adding some darker purple. Probably not to the whole thing, just a few spots.
Is anyone ready to move on to the next step? You are, Roberta? Okay. Now, if you're still working on your blue sky, just keep, keep going. We're not gonna move far ahead. So the next step is going to be the outer wall of the courtyard, which is the wall that has the um, wreath on it. So that is a combination of brown and yellow. I got a little bit of blue on there, I'm gonna wipe it off. So the brown and yellow, you just kind of scoop out a little bit of brown and you're going to put the yellow in a separate pile. So the yellow goes into a separate pile because we're going to add the brown to the yellow, not the yellow to the brown. So I have a little pile of brown and a little pile of yellow. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that brown and slowly start to add it to the yellow. Actually, it's gonna take all of it. Yeah, cause I'm gonna add more. You said we will add the brown to the yellow? Yeah, yeah, so it's about 50-50. It's about the same amount of brown okay. to the yellow, but you wanna add it a little at a time because if you overdo it with the brown, you're gonna to wanna to start all over again because it's really hard to lighten a dark. It's much easier to darken the light color. And test it. See if you like the color on your board. And it's the same thing with this color as with the blue, it's transparent. So you can go right over the wreath. You don't have to worry about trying to go around the edge but I suggest that you do go around the ribbon because we want to keep that background white when we put that red on the ribbon. It makes, um, makes the red a lot stronger on top of the white than the yellow. Just take your time and breathe. I hold my breath when I'm painting sometimes. I need to pay attention. Another thing um, that I've learned with painting is to pay attention to how much tension I'm holding the brush with. Sometimes I'll squeeze on the brush. I don't know why, it's just a, a I don't know, some kind of a re reaction of trying to control it, I guess. But you wanna loosen your grip on your paintbrush, um, then your wrist or your hands won't get sore from painting.
and uh, and we're not looking for a flat texture on the um, chapel or the courtyard wall itself because it, it's stucco, you know, so it's going to have imperfections on it. So the paint is going to decide. <laughs> So after we finish that wall, we're going to take brown and now we're not mixing with this brown. This is going to be for the doors that are on the front wall and the, um, the steeple, I guess it is, in the back here. So with the doors, we're just taking that brown and painting the whole door. You can even go all the way flat across the bottom here, the bottom of the door, because there's a shadow back there. So I kind of put like a thin coat of paint on the door. Not too heavy. Cover it up. And again, it's a door, so if it has streak marks, it's okay. And 
And this is just straight brown, nothing mixed together with it. Kind of as easy as it gets. And you can even go over the window on the, uh, the right hand side of your painting because we're going to paint that a dark brown. Galaxy S9 has joined your meeting. Winter break. Could you let them in? No, they've joined when I get a notice.
Thank you. Is anybody ready to move to the next step? Not yet. <laughs> Okay, next step is going to be dark brown. This is our third brown color. <clears throat> How we're going to mix our dark brown is with brown and blue. So it's about 75% brown and 25% blue for those who are good mixers. But what I'm doing is I'm going to put my brown down on my palette and just add in my blue a little bit at a time. And you'll see it getting darker. There's something about the blue paint when you mix it with some other colors, it makes it a little clumpy. If your paint gets clumpy, don't worry about it. Mine's getting clumpy right now, it's fine. It's still fine to work with. Okay, 
And so now that I have that mixed up, I'm not going to take that brush that I mixed with and put it on the canvas board because it's got too much paint on it. I'm just going to wipe, wipe it on the paper towel and then use the paint. So the dark brown goes on the chapel. where the ladder is. And like, I'm looking at mine now and it looks like my ladder is disappearing. But once I get all the paint on there, I'm gonna spread it until I can start to see the image underneath come back. So this dark brown goes also behind the cross on the altar here through the doorway. That's part of the chapel in the background. goes up on those little triangles up on top of the steeples there for where the crosses are at. And if it goes on re really super lightly the first time, don't worry, let it dry and come back and do a second coat. Or maybe you like that effect. It kind of has like a antique-ish look to it in my mind. Now I'm also putting that dark brown in that bottom corner of the window with the bell in it. And I'm using the same color on the bell because that bell is in the shadow. So I'm gonna make it brown. And then on the doors, I'm gonna use that dark brown. In those door panels. And on the top panel of the door, there's some slats so I'm just gonna do a line, one row of dark. And if you want to use your marker to define your lines, you can do that too, where the slats are. But I'm just kind of putting in little, little rows of darker color. Oops, got a little too much on there. A little bit of a blob. I'm gonna pull it up with my Q-tip. Let it dry. So now I'm noticing because I have my bell painted brown that I did not put blue in that window because that window has a window behind it that goes all the way through. The other one does not. But before I add that blue, I'm going to put my brown, dark brown in that window on the left, I mean on the right hand 
tower. and add my blue to that window. And if your paint gets too lumpy, just add a little water to it. I'll loosen my dark brown up a little bit with some water and then wipe it before I go back in. Just gonna make it a little darker behind the cross because that's a doorway. Thing is when you put a second coat on, don't uh, just put it on and stop because the more you mess with it, it loosens up the paint underneath. And you just gotta let it dry. If it starts getting white like canvas, just let it dry and come back to it. And if you're not on the dark brown yet, don't worry. It's in the chat of what areas you're going to paint that dark brown. because we're also using that same color on the mountain in the background. And I had um, one of our painters last night actually put purple in the mountain in the background, which was really nice too, if you wanna go outside the box. Because our mountains do look a little purple at night. So I think that's cool that they do. Oops, one more thing is that little medallion in front of the altar there on the front part of the altar in the courtyard that has the dark brown in it too.
Nada. And once we've got that dark brown on there, we're gonna mix up a color. It's actually a gray color, but we're gonna make it with brown and white. So I use that dark brown that we've already mixed. Am I getting too far ahead of you guys? No? Okay, so the dark brown is on the steeples, up on the triangles, in the windows, on the bell, on the chapel, in the background, the doors, the medallion, and the mountain. Now the, the mixture of the brown and the white, that grayish color, is going to go up on the top of the steeple here. They're, they're, they're like metal up there. But I'm going to put some of that color right here on the, where it's still white up on the rooftop of that steeple. And I'm going to use this same color on the altar. And this is just a thin coat. I'm going to add the white to make it a little more gray. And I'm going to put it on this altar down here. I'm going to come back with highlights later. So the gray is up on top of the steeples and over here on the altar. And then we're going to move to green. We're finished with our browns, but we're not finished with the brown because we're going to darken that green color with brown. So we're adding like 75% green to 25% brown. And it's just gonna, just enough to darken that green up because the green alone is kind of bright. So I'm just taking some of my green and I'm gonna put some brown in with it. And if it gets too like muddy gray looking, which is what mine just did, just add more green to it. And then again, like kind of wipe off your brush before you put it on your, <clears throat> on your canvas board. 
because mixing these colors, it gives it a glob. And test it out on your, your tree. See if you like the color. Not add a little more brown or a little more green. And we'll use that green for the trees, for the shrubs, and for the wreath on the wall, the courtyard wall. And when I'm putting the color on the um, wreath, I'm just kind of dabbing it. I'm not really spreading it with the brush. I'm just dabbing my brush, getting the green on there for the wreath. I don't want to loosen up that color too much that's underneath it. And I'm going right kind of over the line. I'm not trying to keep that sharp line there on the, the wreath. But you can see when you put that on top of that brownish goldish color that you put on the wall, it makes it a nice dark green. I'm just kind of patting on some more of that color, that green color, just to give it a little more texture on the shrubs and the, and the tree. Thank <laughs> you. 
And once we've finished with the green shrubs, your water probably looks something like mine, like a mud bath. This is a good time to get up and go rinse out your water container and clean off your brush. So at this point, the only thing, the only white that should be showing on your canvas board is the ribbon on the wreath and the ground. So kind of do a scan over the rest of your canvas and um, make sure there isn't any, any white showing through. If you might have missed an area in a window or uh, the mountain. And we're going to 
add the color for the ground and it's kind of icy and snowy. That's why we're going with light blue. So we have our clean water and a clean brush. We're getting away from our browns for a little bit here. And we're gonna go ahead and mix up a light blue. And again, we're taking the white first, making a little pile of white. And we're only adding a tiny bit of blue to that white because it only takes a little bit of blue to darken up. So I just have like a little bit on my brush here. You can see that. Let's see. And I'm going to mix it in. And get a light blue. And if it gets clumpy, mine's getting a little clumpy. Like I said, there's something with that blue, mixing that blue. Just adding a little bit, bit of water. I'm dipping my brush in the water and mixing it into the paint. And I'm gonna make it a little whiter. And again, test it on your board. If it's a bright light blue, it's okay. That's what I have on the original painting. It was kind of bright. Ooh. Looks even brighter on my screen. And then we'll just go ahead and brush that on to the bottom. Don't worry about getting it um, on the bottom side of the shrubs because we're going to put a shadow there when we're doing highlights. So it's okay if you go over that line. And then once I get it all covered with my light blue, I'm just going to go right into my, I'm going to take my brush. Oops, sorry. I'm just going to go right into my white and put some white. Let's move that up a little bit. And I'm just adding white onto the blue, going back and forth from left to right. It's kind of so it's not just a flat blue color. We got some white in there, it's reflecting. There's a moon out, it's not out in our painting, but it's out somewhere reflecting off the, the ice and the snow on the ground.
And then we're going to start with Faralitos. I don't want to jump too far ahead. Is anybody, is anybody ready to do Faralitos, I'll say? I'm ready. ready. I'm not ready yet. Okay. I just finished the outlining. I'll catch up in a second. <laughs> All the steps are in the chat. I don't know if that's been helpful to anybody. Just kidding. Yes, it's been helpful. Oh, good. So I, um, I can also send out that what I have in the chat, that's why I don't want anybody to feel pressured to catch up, go at your own pace. Just kind of, you know, if, if you keep an eye on the different tips that I'm giving as we're going from step to step, you can go through this painting and finish it, you know, in your own time, you know, take your time.
Are you guys ready for farolitos? Yeah. So it's pretty simple. Um, we're gonna apply the, the farolitos that are in the back meaning up on top of the chapel first. And we're gonna put those on with a Q-tip. So everybody has a Q-tip and you're just gonna take your Q-tip and put it in your white paint and kind of roll it on the side of your paint cup. And then starting over next to the wall, you're just gonna dot leave a space, dot. And then reload. And then on the wall, you're gonna start from one side and this side you're gonna dot and lift it up. Dot and lift. These are, we're a little closer, so they're a little bigger, oops. So you're gonna be reloading. Dot and lift. And this is with the Q-tip. Just putting the Q-tip down and leave a bigger space than, well, leave as much space as you like. If you want a whole bunch of them close together, that's fine. And just take your time. My, Q-tip is starting to get a tail from the cotton, so I'm winding it up again. So again, we use the Q-tip for the farolitos and you just stick the Q-tip into the paint, roll it along the side of the cup to get all the excess off. And just up on the top here, just a little dot. And then on the bottom, we put the dot down and just pull it up just a little bit. And it's okay if there's color coming through because we're gonna put the yellow on top of that after and um, make them look like they're lit candles.
And while, while those are drying, we're gonna do a few highlights. Go ahead and put this in the chat. Oops, wrong one. So the highlights that we're going to do is by using white paint and mixing it with a tiny bit of brown. And I'm going ahead and putting that in for into the chat for those who are ready for that next step. So it's white paint with a tiny bit of brown. When we're putting when we're putting highlights on here. We're only going to use a tiny bit of paint on our brushes. So I mix up, I'm going to turn my palette over to a corner where I still have room to mix. I'm going to take my brown, I mean my white, sorry. And I'm going to mix in a tiny bit of brown, tiny bit. We're just darkening up this a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. If it looks pink, add more white. You don't want a pink highlight. I know some people are not ready for this. Some might be. So I'll just do some. So I've just mixed up this paint this light color with my brush and my brush is loaded. So I want to wipe off that paint. I want to wipe it onto the paper towel and just get rid of it off the brush. Cause I'm going to use, I'm going to touch into my paint with a tiny bit and then I'm going to wipe it on my palette. Like I really want all the excess paint off before I do a highlight. So I take that paint, I have the brush that has barely any paint on it, and I'm gonna run it underneath those farolitos that are on the wall. And so we're just putting on a tiny bit at a time because we don't wanna like brighten it up too much. So I'm going over the line, the black line that is on the top of that wall there. I'm going over it with this white highlight. Well, it's not white, it's like a light brown. What I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of snow up on the top of that wall there. And I guess you could put as much or as little as you like. But it's just kind of getting rid of that hard black line that was up there. So where are you guys at? Are you guys um, ready to do highlights or are you still working on other parts? I'm ready, Suzanne, I'm with you. Okay, awesome. I'm doing some highlights. You are? Yeah. Okay, so the you got the top part here. And then we're gonna move over.
to the mountaintops. So like right underneath the black line on the mountains, we're putting a, a, a line. You know, not too thin. You want to highlight there. And I'm, again, not putting too much paint on my brush. This time I'm going under the black line. I want to leave that there. There is a little bit on the windowsills. On the treetops, I'm doing kind of the same thing that I did on the mountain. Just kind of going underneath the line and adding a few more. So under the line, on the treetops. A little bit on the bushes. Oh, mine are kind of wet. Just a little bit at the top of the shrubs. And then up on the steeples, underneath those triangles. Well, at the bottom of the triangle, not underneath. And then in the background, over here where the ladder is at, a little bit here, just where that black line is going from left to right. And I'm going to use the little corner part of my brush and put some on the ladder. I'm going to brighten up that ladder a little bit. And then we have some of these highlights down on the altar there, right on the top part of the altar. And I'm going to put a little bit in front where we're going to put a shadow. Let's start with the light shadow. On the doors, on the bottom of the panels. Okay. And then stars in the sky. So once you finish your highlights, and it, it is in the chat of where they're going. Then we're going to start to put stars and lights. And the, the way that we're going to apply the paint is by using the, the tail end of your paintbrush, meaning the, the handle side. So I'm going to take just the handle part of my brush, not the brush side, the handle, and dip it in the paint, dip it in the white paint, and just start adding little dots, stars in the sky, because we have a clear, cold winter night going on in this picture. It's not really, it's not snow. I would have done the gray sky, but I felt like we needed blue. So I say to start with the sky because you get a feel for how much paint is on your brush 
when we move over to the crosses, we're going to be, we want, we don't want them to be quite so big. Some of them are going to be just because it's the nature of the game. <laughs> but if you tap, like if you can you check out the bottom of your brush and you see, well, there's a lot of paint on there. Tap in the sky first and then go over to the cross. You should be able to see the cross through your paint and just kind of dab, leaving spaces because we're not just gonna do a straight dotted line. We're gonna kind of alter that a little bit. So when we're adding the dots to the um, crosses, we're leaving spaces at first. And then we're gonna alternate some, because to give the effect that these crosses have the lights wrapped around them. They're not just straight up and down. For this, are we using straight white or the white with a touch of brown? Just straight white. Okay, thank yep. you. Straight white for the lights. And I'm gonna put them on top of the shrubs. So I'm coming back to my cross now. I'm gonna add some more lights. And again, I'm gonna tap most of the paint into a shrub or into the sky and then come back and add it to the cross. So yeah, they're gonna be, it's gonna be all white lights and then we're going to apply some yellow paint to some of them. Once they're dry. And there's also lights going across the top of the doorway and the top of the stairs. I mean, the top of the doors, doors and doorway. And on the wreath. coming down the sides of the doors. And after we get all the white lights and and um, stars. I'm gonna go ahead and add the red to that ribbon. So when you're adding red to the ribbon, 
the it's a teeny tiny bit of paint on your brush because it kind of the red paint will just stain the canvas right there. You don't want to put a big blob in there because it'll drip. Well, maybe it won't drip, but my experience is it might. So I'm cleaning off my brush. I know there's a, a lot of paint in the cup compared to what we're actually going to use. Hopefully you can use these paints to create something else another time. So I'm wiping the red off my brush, <coughs> mostly. <coughs> and then I'm just gonna touch that ribbon. And I can tell right now I have too much water on my brush from when I cleaned it off. So I'm cleaning off, let's move my, over here, turn it around. Cleaning off my brush and drying it. And I'll dip it back in the red again and wipe it off and then go in and add some red to that ribbon. Add a few more stars. Yep. How are we doing? Okay.
Side, we'll go up. And the last couple of highlights are just underneath the bushes and the altar. And I'm gonna do that with brown. I'm just gonna take a little brown out of my cup, wipe. And I'm just gonna put it right at the bottom of that bush. Actually, I'm gonna mix a little blue with it. I'm gonna darken that brown. And darken it up. I'm going to add that where the bottom line of the bush is. A little bit under the altar here. And under the other bush. The door, bottom of the door. And this is where if you want to darken anything up, you can just add some color on top. You don't have to. And the final stage of this painting for those that might be waiting is the yellow. If you're not here yet, don't worry about it. But if you are, we're just dipping the paint into the yellow, wiping off the excess. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint right across the farolito. I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to stop at each one. And I want that yellow paint to be partially on the green and partially on and completely over the white. And that kind of gives it the effect of glow, it's glowing. And you can have it come up above. Or just across. And 
and the ones that are on, in the background on the chapel, I'm just gonna take my brush and just go across the whole area. I don't wanna to scrub too hard because I, I'm kind of tapping on those because I don't wanna pick up the blue and turn it into green. Wanna keep it yellow. I actually got a couple of green up there, that's okay. And then I'm just gonna put yellow, not on every single dot of glowing light, just a few. And you just tap it. You don't have to be super careful because it doesn't show up on the background. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to have red lights or blue or purple, if you want to have colored lights on your, as your decorations, you can do that too. I kind of like the brightness of the yellow and the white. I'm going to do the same on the cross. Just kind of tap a couple of spots. with that yellow, not do the whole thing, but just a little bit.
Are you finished, Roberta? Can I see your painting? Oh, great. Great. <laughs> nice job. I like it. Did you have fun? Yes. Oh, good. Always good. Fun. Thank you so much. It was great. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming. See you next week. That's right. You're going to do the, um, the fireworks, right? Yes. Oops, sorry, wait a minute. Ooh.